Good afternoon, my friends. Welcome back to the channel. Hitchhiking Yeti here. And today is kind of a special vlog for me because we are going to be touring this place. This here is the Mustang Owners Museum located in Concord, North Carolina. Just about three miles away, two miles away from the famous Charlotte Motor Speedway, the home of the Coca-Cola 600. We're gonna go inside this place and check out some Mustangs today. Kind of a cool time of year because as of April 17th, in a few weeks from the time of this recording, Mustang will be 60 years old. April 17th, 1964, the Mustang was unveiled at New York's World's Fair. So a uh, really, really cool thing that they're 60 years old or 60 year anniversaries coming up and we're gonna go inside and see what they have. See what kind of cars they've, they've had donated because the people who own these cars, that's why they call it the Mustang Owners Museum, some other people do it and I guess they kind of lease it to them or they let them have it for a year. I don't really know the ins and outs of how this all works. I just know they're owned by individuals in here. So uh, let's go on inside and check it out. But before I do that, I do want to say this. In 2019, I did come down here and look at some cars, but I was a little confused when I arrived today because this is a new building from last time I was here in 2019. We can know that's five years ago, but last time I was here, it was in that building. That right there is now called the Ford Restoration Parts, Dennis Carpenter. So that right there is, uh, is the old building where they used to have it. And now it's over here on the corner of Dearborn and Carpenter Court. And it's right here in this building. This building looks a little bit smaller, but who knows? Maybe it's just, it looks that way on the outside because that one is so big and grand and tall. So uh, let's go on inside and check out some Mustangs. All right, and here we are at the front door of the Mustang Owners Museum. See the museum hours, Monday through Saturday from 10 to 5, Sunday from 12 to 5. And right there is their website if you want to go check them out. All right, my friends, I just paid my $10, which is not bad. $10 for admission. Right here is where you will pay. The really nice lady that helped us out. I really appreciate it. They have some uh, some owner museum stickers up here. And then of course, they have all kinds of cars and stuff you can pick from. Things like that. A lot of cool stuff. She kind of gave me a, a rundown of what they have here. Like these right here. That's really cool. This right here is uh, really awesome because that don't really exist no more. That is, uh, SVT has not existed since 2014, and they was the uh, special vehicle team who made the Shelby GT500 Mustangs, and even back in the 90s, they made the uh, 96 and, uh, you know, 97, 98, and etc. cetera, uh, Cobras. So now it's called Ford Performance. So it's kind of, I don't know what happened exactly, but I know Ford Performance did take the place of what special vehicle team was doing. So uh, they have a lot of cool stuff in here. Look at all these shirts they have. I kind of like that one. I like plain shirts that don't have like a lot going on. I like stuff like that. Mustang Owners Museum, Concord, North Carolina. That is pretty cool right there. Here's some more classic Mustang cruising shirts. Look at that, I'm not old, I'm vintage. The older I get, the more I say that by the way. And then this here is pretty cool too. I like this one, the back of it. That is the Shelby Speed Shop, the GT500, GT350, which I'm a huge fan of the Shelby brand. That's why some, some of my videos you guys might even notice, I always have a Shelby jacket on. It's uh, blue, really cool. So right here it says Barry's Mustang. The Mustang on the wall is one Mustang Barry is not able to bring back to life. Barry supplied many of the parts along with Bill and Kathy Harris and Grayson and Score. If you don't like the display, blame them. We ask for better parts. And right here is those set parts. So I guess this was found, but they didn't have enough to put it back together. So you got kind of the front of the car, you got the hood, you got some, uh, fender wells from the front of the car and then over at the top you got the rear end of the car you're just missing all the other guts it kind of makes it a mustang but that's a very interesting display of a mustang <laughs> we're going to get into this now this this car right here this 5.0 
this screams vanilla ice right remember uh, the ice ice baby song and it has the uh, fox body that he's driving 5.0 with my rag top down where my hair can blow that's what this kind of reminds me of so this is a raffle that they're uh, doing i think it's 20 dollars a ticket you could win this car matter of fact right there i didn't even know this was standing over here there he is there's vanilla ice <laughs> This is old school right here, man. Look at that. All right, so right here on this wall, starting out with the, this here would have been the Shelby GT350 engine. This here was the one that uh, I come out in like 2016, 2017. The flat plane crank V8 motor naturally aspirated, making, you know, 526 horsepower, 429 foot-pounds of torque, and a very high rev and RPM. So uh, really cool. And then the rest of them right here, we have the three valve motor. Right here's the 5.0 from way back in the day, 1969, 1970. Here's a 351 Mustang engine. You don't see them like that no more. No fuel injection on that. It's actually got a carburetor. And then right here is the Shelby GT350 engine. Don't say what year model this is. It's a supercharged on that thing. Pretty cool, 306 horsepower. Here's the Boss 302 race engine. And then right over here we have a 289 V8 motor. And then starting right here is something that's really cool. This here is a clay model. And this here's kind of, she was telling me, this is how they start designing the cars like at back at the factory. You know, they, they will design like a small clay clay model like this and right here's the tools when they're coming up with like what's what is this car going to look like see the look at right there they have like the uh, the tail lights and stuff on it it's like styrofoam on one side and then they clay it and then once once they're happy with this then they take it to this this right here this entire car she said is all clay you believe that look at that that's the newest 5.0 Mustang. But it's not really a Mustang at all. That is all clay and, a, and with a paint wrap on it. And you can actually remove, she come over here and she just removed that up and there it is. It's just clay, it ain't nothing real. That is, that is wild. But this here is the S650, the newest one. Seventh generation Mustang. And that's, that's kind of how they do it. And then same thing over here. This here is the full size clay model interior. So this is all clay also, except the seats. And then this uh, this dash panel, she said is really cool because you can actually go in and go back to panels from yesteryear and it will show up like it's in this car. So in other words, if you're a fan of the 1987 Fox body, you can you can select it and it will give you the gauges and everything that you see here in this old fox body all right right here is some cool stuff they have mustang designs so you can like they have these drawers right here where it says like first generation and you can open it up and then they have like different pictures of that generation mustang kind of cool right here's they got fourth and fifth Generation Mustang. Obviously, they have like concept cars and things like that that you can kind of thumb through and check it out. Check that out right there. We are seventh generation Mustangs. And then right over here next to it, we have us another sign that says Mustang Emblem Exhibit. And look at all these old emblems they have in here from way back in the day. That is pretty cool. Got a big old Mach 1. There's GT emblems. Different fonts to the Mustang signs on the cars. There's a, that, like a gas and brake pedal maybe. A lot of patches. Check that out, they got some pins. And why not go ahead and look at the last one? It's like the gas cap on the back or something. There's a 5.0 emblem. 
that's pretty awesome and right over here at this desk they have set up you can look at some of the uh the famous paint that they've had over the years right here was the maybe the 2004 uh mustang cobra the terminator right there it is mystic chrome i had a 96 mustang cobra that was my first mustang that i bought and it was called mystic also but it wasn't mystic chrome i think it was called mystic green but if you look at them you can see how the the paint changes right it's kind of like a purple look i don't know if you if it'll show up on camera but it's actually got like a green over here as i move it around it does change i don't think a camera can really pick it up very well at least my camera won't but uh it's very pretty uh but yeah it's not picking it up at all in the in the screen it looks just like a purple but it really is showing green right here really cool and this is kind of similar to what my car is today my 2014 but this right here is called candy red and the 2013 shelby's was like a candy red color and mine's ruby red I think 2014 was the only year they made ruby red for the Shelby GT500 and right here is a candy apple red kind of cool that they have this available where you can kind of check it all out all right let's see what else we can get into a lot of stuff to see here at the museum now let's head over here into the next room and see what else they have well I can tell you this it would not be a Mustang museum without Steve McQueen's bullet and right there it is. There is the Steve McQueen Bullet Mustang. It's green, looking all awesome. That is so cool right here. Right there's a little information on it. If it's not all washed out, there we go. Right there, pretty awesome. And then look at this sign right here where all these people have been signing their name over time. They come here, this fans of the museum and the Mustangs and all the way down through here that is pretty cool and it says feel free to add your signature all right right here next to this wall is the golden mustang look at that thing ain't that pretty cool looking and uh, the lady was telling us out front the significance of this one it is a 1966 golden anniversary mustang and uh, this Mustang was actually owned by Henry Ford II. And it, he actually gave it to his butler for appreciation. That is pretty cool. And this special Mustang is only one of 50 ever built. All golden anniversary Mustangs were built on March 29, 1966 at Ford Assembly Plant in San Jose, California. Pretty cool. And right here with this and here's called little red a 1975 mustang 2. right there's a little information about the owners if you if you know who that is that's their car lincoln to north carolina and then right over here we have a 1967 mustang it is a replica of uh, what carol shelby kind of built for ford 540 horsepower 402 foot pounds of torque and that's kind of what it looks like because i think when mustangs first came out everybody kind of when it first came out it didn't have a lot of horsepower and it was kind of a you know they called it a secretary car so ford went and uh kind of hired Kerr shelby to uh you know who had a lot of racing background and won le mans and all that type of stuff and uh, this is what he come up with this is his version of a mustang which it took on a life of its own as it went forward and this right here is a pretty significant car that's been donated the texas mile record holder for fastest shelby gt500 kr see this video on youtube 205.5 miles an hour pretty impressive oh they got some more stats over here I missed on the drag strip T 
8 at 138 miles an hour. Daytona last lap, 2 minutes and 3 seconds, 175 miles an hour. Team Shelby Racing. Big ol' heat extractor. Keep it cool. Look at that big ol' snake in one right there, that Cobra. That's pretty awesome. And then we got this green Mustang right here. Look at that. So convertible. Got a little rust back here in the back, but nothing too bad. So this car right here is a 2015 Shelby GT350R. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think this was maybe the same year model or type that uh, Jay Leno bought and actually had on his YouTube channel. Jay Leno's Garage that I've seen. But this is not Jay Leno's car. This is actually someone named Jeff Mays. One of 37 built. So this here is the 5.2 liter flat plane crank motor. Very high revving car. Making about 526 horsepower. Really awesome. A lot of people who drive these cars say it's one of the best handling Mustangs. You know, at least in the modern era. All right, so you cannot have a Mustang video or, you know, at least in my opinion, without Eleanor the Mustang. This is probably one of the most famous Mustangs, especially in somewhat modern times. I mean, you got to think, Gone in 60 Seconds came out in, what, 2000? So, um, it's 24 years ago, but it's still one of my favorite moments in a, in a movie when you see Nicolas Cage wheeling his car at the end of the movie. You know evading the police and everything and jumping it and all that kind of stuff this car right here reawoken my love for the mustang that is for sure especially it really introduced me to the shelby gt500 mustang 1967 even though this is not a real mustang this is just like a kit car but the people who made the car uh, for the movie actually designed this car so it's official in its own way it is really a eleanor but it's not a real you know shelby gt500 mustang but this was the same replica of what was used in the movie to film as you can see looks really cool looking some people are getting sick of this car because so many people are, are so in love with it and think it's the greatest thing in the world i'm one of those but i do know there's certain people that's like they're worn out by it it's been done so many times you see it at car shows and things but kind of look at the motor there it looks really cool always enjoyed it ain't nothing like it when he's in the movie and he hits the nos button and he just takes off pretty cool looking on the inside steering wheel and right down there is the, the red button for the nos that he hits in the movie that is pretty cool got a heck of a sound system in this one i wonder if they had that in the movie i'm not sure i don't remember that part I would not have a sound system like that in a car like this because I'm one of the people who like to hear the exhaust more than music. That's just me. And right here is the NOS. Kind of cool looking. That big old fuel safe racing fuel tank right there. That's pretty neat. And it's sitting right here next to this Cobra 2, which we're going to look at that too right here in a second. But that is Eleanor. Going in 60 seconds. Really, I feel like this is the icing on the cake almost for this video because I love this car so much. I love the look of it. I love the black stripes, the silver, grayish color. It was just mean. It was just awesome. Gone in 60 seconds. If you ain't seen it with Nicolas Cage, definitely go check it out. You'll have a new appreciation for this car. It was so good. All right, so speaking of Eleanor, gone in 60 seconds. Right here is the kind of what the movie front cover would look like. This is actually, looks like it's been signed by Nicolas Cage. Gone in 60 seconds. Right there it is in the movie where they jumped the Shelby GT500 when he's evading everybody. It seemed like the whole freaking city was after him in that movie. That was such a good movie. Just seeing this makes me want to go back and uh, 
and watch it. Right there's Robert Duvall, who, you know, he was awesome in that movie. And he was in another car movie I was a big fan of called Days of Thunder. Right there's Nicolas Cage. That's when they're out on the prowl, stealing cars. That's why they're kind of hunkered down right there. And there's the, see, when I said everybody, they got a helicopter, cops. And that's when he hit that, that go baby go button and took off and just blew them all away. He left the helicopter, they couldn't, they couldn't run with him. That was so cool, so rad. Good memories. All right, so like I said, right here next to the Eleanor car, we have this. So this car right here was awesome. Super, a lot of, lot of speed, right? A lot of horsepower, Nas. This here was a car, 1977 Mustang Cobra II. So this, this car here, um, was really they really chilled out on horsepower at this time because you had the gas crisis going on in the 70s so uh, you wanted better gas you wanted you know a little less horsepower things like that and this here was called the little jewel cobra 2 was made popular on a tv show charlie's angels with uh, fair fawcett mini cobra 2 had blue stripes while the green stripes are considered more rare and this one here actually has green stripes has the, the Cobra on the grill. And they put another bigger Cobra right down on that license plate holder that you would need in the state of California, I believe. I think you gotta have a license plate on the front of the car. Here in North Carolina, you only have to have a license plate on the on the rear. Little Cobra stuff, that's kind of the inside of the car, what it looks like. Check out that dash right there. There's the back seat interior. Pretty darn cool. And we take like a back view of it. It says Cobra 2. This was definitely not a favorite of mine. I will just go ahead and say that. This is probably the least favorite models of the Mustang for me is the Cobra 2. I know certain, certain people, this is a soft spot for them. But for me, nah, that's not really, that really wasn't for me, I don't think. All right, check out this right here. This is the 1964 New York World's Fair Mustang VIN number 0004. One of 12 Mustang convertibles used to give rides in the Ford Pavilion. The mirror on the floor shows one of the connection points for the rides pulley system. Estimated 40,000 people rode this vehicle during the fair in 1964. So in the opening of the video, you know, I was telling you that the 60th anniversary, the Mustang birthday is coming up on April 17th, 2024. So this all happened back in 1964. This is actually one of the cars that was at the World's Fair. How cool was that? And right here is the mirror that they're referencing. And look, see that right there? That's where the pulley system would have been attached to the car. And people could get in the car and it pulls them around, as you can see right here on the wall car full of ladies and you can see the other car right there in front of them so it was almost like a Disney World ride <laughs> I mean look at that that's what it looked like that was the pavilion check that out that is so cool Mustang history Americana history right here on display at the owners museum look inside that terrier got the seat belts you know, seat belts are kind of funny. No, no over the shoulder seat belts in back in those days. I didn't even know cars this old had seat belts because you know seat belt law didn't come into effect. I think until the late '80s or mid '80s or something. I mean, heck, I have all kind of memories when I was a kid. I would be, you know, riding in a car, standing up in the seat. I wouldn't have no seat, but I'd be standing up there like this. <laughs> you know, kid laying in the back window of cars it was, it was crazy back then and over here my wife she's actually looking at the old this is the ford motor company pavilion at the pavilion world's fair at the world's fair i wonder if that's still there today in new york somewhere that's going to be all darked out we really can't see it but trust me that's okay. that's what it is for sure we got the little thing. oh yeah you see that right there? Let me see if we can zoom in. It's very small. But you can see where the Mustang was sitting right there with that Ford emblem. 
and then we're going to zoom out and show you a picture of what it looked like there on the wall right there it was that is really really cool it's got some sign right up here it says world's fair right above this this model and they had different pictures that you can kind of look at through here look at all those mustangs and this here was a you can see that pulley right here that's what we've seen on the front of the car or underneath it using that mirror that there was the pulley system so we learned a thing or two then we got some more cars over here let's go check them out so this right here is a 1969 Mustang Mach 1 and uh, I gotta say something this is a beautiful car got the hood pins on it it's got like a flat black hood Man, it's creaky in here ain't it I like I like the 69s that looks real mean really cool looking then right right next to it we have us a, a boss 302 there's a little information on it I know there's always been a lot of fans of the Boss Mustangs. I'm not super familiar with some of the older ones, but I'll definitely show you what I can show you here today. And, you know, you be the judge. What do you think? I think that's pretty cool looking. Nice, clean engine. Got the, the cutout, you know, for the breather there. back a long time ago used to see quite a few of these on the road or cars that, you know I was really young but I remember these wheels were really really popular I don't know if all of them was Boss 302's that was this like a stock wheel that they put on all Mustangs back in that time period or was it just on the Boss 302 okay so right here we have the Boss 302 from back in the day and then right here we have another Boss 302 Mustang. This is a more modern version of it. Pretty much the same color, same kind of decals. As you see, it says 302. It's got the black stripe. It goes down the side. Very similar or reminiscent to that one. They even put the same little like hood scoop 302 thing on there. Kind of cool paying tribute. This is uh, from the, what they call it, the S197 body type i don't know what year this was but i'm gonna say i'm gonna guesstimate 07 08 maybe 09 there is no information here so i'm kind of you know i mean i could google it but what fun that be somebody could actually go into the <laughs> go into the comments and correct me or let us all know but that's all that's all good so right here we have a garage find, not a barn find, but a garage find, all original. 1967 Mustang Coupe 289 V8, 39,000 original miles. Never sat outside, always garaged, of course. Goes right there's the picture of it. That's pretty wild, man. Right here it is. You see, like, look at that, man. That stuff's actual metal. No plastic, right? That is awesome that people do like 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 they find these cars, you know, just sitting around in some kind of a garage or something. And you notice this next car we're gonna look at is the garage find. So they built a garage for it, you know, just to make sure it feels at home. It does look pretty rough, but they have not done anything to it. It's all original. And I know they have a little thing for this over here. Oh, check out that chicken right there. Yeah, right here it is. This is a 1964 Mustang VIN number 0211 owner Todd Adams built on the very first day of the Mustang line production to go to four dealers March 9th 1964 straight six cylinder three speed transmission man 
it says VIN number 0211 is currently the lowest VIN number known other than the 178 Mustangs built for market purposes. The vehicle was initially sold in Winston-Salem Ford. So right here in North Carolina. One of the earliest known productions Mustang built on March 9th. That is wild. Look at that. Pretty darn cool. Let's see what we have over here. It looks like we got some toys. We gotta have some toys. We have like some models. Here's this thing for Snickers. Check that out, man. They got beer. There's a Mustang Brewing Company. Ain't that something? You can win a car out of a carton of chocolate milk. And then right there is a Lego set creator. My wife actually has one of those, but I don't think it's that one. I think it might have been like an older one or something. Of course, they got a Monopoly set. Pretty wild. And we got kind of a Transformer going on here, right? Is that from one of the, you know, I'm a Transformer guy, but I do not recognize that Transformer right there, but it does have an Autobot symbol on him. There's an old Coca-Cola bottle. It says Mustang on it. And they had Mustang cigarettes. Say it ain't so. I bet that was made right here in North Carolina too. Tobacco Road. All right, my friends, I guess that will pretty much do it for me today here at the Mustang Owners Museum in Concord, North Carolina. Really cool place to come to and check out to see all these awesome rides. If you're a fan of Mustang, they do change these cars out uh, very often. What'd she say, every six months? Every six months, they change these cars out. I think they have about uh, like three or four in here that stays all the time. So uh, definitely come by here if you're a fan of Mustangs, check it out. Definitely the month of the April if you're here in the area and you can come check out some of these cool rides, definitely do so. Definitely do so, really a lot of awesome stuff here. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. If you like the day's content, please give it a thumbs up. Definitely put any kind of stories of your Mustang fandom in the comics. I love reading stuff like that. I'm a fan. You're a fan. Let's do it. I love hearing your stories or maybe you owned one or what you owned or whatnot. Love to hear from you. Until next time, friends, I'm the Hitchhiking Yeti, and I will see you in our next video. Y'all stay safe out there, and I hope to see you again real soon.